Google Self-Paced Lab 342. Ensure access identity in Google Cloud. Challenge Lab. You have started a new role as a junior member of the security team, for the Orca team in Julianc. Your team is responsible for ensuring the security of the cloud infrastructure and services, that the company's applications depend on. You are expected to have the skills and knowledge for these tasks, so don't expect step-by-step -step guides to be provided. You have been asked to deploy, configure, and test a new Kubernetes engine cluster, that will be used for application development and pipeline testing by the, the Orca development team. As per the organization's security standards, you must ensure that the new Kubernetes engine cluster is built, according to the organization's most recent security standards. After login to your cloud console, inspect the provisioned resources. First, navigate to Compute Engine. You should see that a VM instance called Orca Jumpost has been already created in the project. Second, navigate to VPC network. Find the subnet called Orca Build Subnet in the Orca Build VPC network and note down the region that the subnet is being located. Now open the cloud shell and use gcloud command to set one of the zones in that region as the default compute zone. Task 1, create a custom security role. Your first task is to create a new custom IAM security role, called orca underscore storage underscore update, that will provide the Google Cloud storage bucket and object permissions required, to be able to create and update storage objects. Initially you have been told that, the development team requires that the service account, should have the permissions necessary to add and update objects in Google Cloud Storage Buckets. To do this, you will have to create a new custom IAM role that will provide the following permissions. Storage.buckets.get Storage.objects.get Storage.objects.list Storage.objects.update Storage.objects.create After running the command, you can navigate to roles under IAM admin, to verify the custom IAM security role that you have just created. If the custom security role, orca underscore storage underscore update has been created correctly with the required permissions, you should be able to pass the first checkpoint. Task 2, create a service account. Your second task is to create the dedicated service account for your new private cluster. You must name this account, orca private cluster SA. To verify the new service account, you can navigate to service accounts under IAM admin in the cloud console. Also, click the check my process button for the second checkpoint. Task 3, bind a custom security role to a service account. You must now bind the cloud operations logging and monitoring roles, that are required for Kubernetes engine cluster service accounts, as well as the custom IAM role you created for storage permissions, to the service account you created earlier. From a previous project, you know that the minimum permissions required by the service account, that is specified for a Kubernetes engine cluster is covered by these three built-in roles. Role slash monitoring dot viewer. Role slash monitoring dot metric writer. Role slash logging dot log writer. You must bind the above roles to the service account used by the cluster, as well as a custom role that you must create in order to provide access to any other services, specified by the development team.
Task 4, Create and Configure a New Kubernetes Engine Private Cluster. The new cluster configuration must include the following. The cluster must be called Orca Test Cluster. The cluster must be deployed to the subnet Orca Build subnet. The cluster must be configured to use the Orca Private Cluster SA service account. The private cluster options Enable master authorized networks, must be enabled. You must add the internal IP address of the Orca Jumpfost compute instance to the master authorized network list. The private cluster options, enable IP alias, must be enabled. The private cluster options, enable private nodes, must be enabled. The private cluster options, and enable private endpoint, must be enabled. If you get any errors, delete the cluster that you created and deploy it again. You should use a slash 32 netmask to ensure that only the specific compute instance is authorized. When adding the internal IP address of the Orca Jumpfost machine to the list of authorized addresses for the private Kubernetes engine cluster, Task 5, deploy an application to a private Kubernetes engine cluster. Your final task is to validate that the cluster is working correctly, by deploying a simple application to the cluster, using the Kubecl tool from the Orca Jumpfost compute instance. You cannot connect directly to a Kubernetes engine private cluster, if the enable private endpoint option has been specified. And you must use a jump host, or a proxy within the same VPC as the cluster, and you must use that jump host or proxy, to connect to the internal management IP address for the cluster. Connect to the SSH of the jump host. As this compute instance is not in the same subnet as the private cluster, you must make sure that the master authorized networks for the cluster includes the internal IP address for the instance, and you must specify the internal IP flag when retrieving cluster credentials using the cloud container clusters get credentials command.
Deploy the Hello App demo to the cluster from the cloud image. To pass the last checkpoint, it is not necessary to expose the deployment as a service. If you want to test the deployment, you can expose its pod using a basic load balancer service with mapping port 80 to 8080. Congratulations! You should finish this challenge lab. Please like this video, if it is helpful to you. Also, click subscribe to follow this channel. See you next time.